practice in a while, man. We missed you, man. How are you? I'm doing I'm well. Doing how are you guys? Good, man. How you uh, how you living with all this uh, Brandon Ayuk 49er stuff? I mean, the the Niners said the Niners said, man, we figured out the quarterback situation. There ain't no drama there. Let's create it with the wide receiver position because <laughs> this is what they do every year, huh? They they lead the NFL in drama every year, it seems like. Um, I don't really know how to judge this without seeing the end result, right? Because on one hand, like the Niners making everything seemingly public and saying who they're negotiating with, to me, reads like they want the world to know that Brandon Ayuk is potentially weighing the idea of going to a worse situation for more money, which in mm. essence could be a negotiating ploy by the Niners saying, yeah, public perception is not going to be on your side, right? Like nobody, is, very few people are ever on the athlete side when they go choose to play in Cleveland or a rebuilding New England team over a team that has a chance to win the Super Bowl, right? So that was my read on that. And then the Steelers stuff, I mean, it makes sense, but I don't know. I I keep coming back to the idea, like, if you're the 49ers, why do you have to trade him? Like, what, like, it, so, so, you know, you don't sign him to a new contract. Like, what's, what's the end game there? Like, how bad is it? Is, is Brandon Ayuk gonna, gonna not be a professional, gonna not understand that, um, you know, he still needs to be a professional, be a productive player to get paid at some point down the road? Like, the 49ers absolutely do not have to trade him. And I have a hard time knowing, you know, the the little I know about Brandon Ayuk, the human being, I can't imagine he's just going to let himself get in the way of this team try, trying to compete for to win a Super Bowl because he still cares about his teammates and stuff like that. So I keep coming back to the idea of like, why do the 49ers have to trade this guy? Because I don't feel like I don't feel like they do. And, th and that said, I don't know the internal dynamics. I don't know what's happening when, when, when Brandon Ayuk's in the building and if he's being like a malcontent to the point where the front office is like, we have to get this guy out of here or if they're just saying like, man, talk to these other teams, see if they'll give you $30 million a year. And if they don't come back to us and then we'll give you our best offer. Right. They might be allowing Brandon, Brandon Ayuk to see what the market actually is for himself instead of negotiating um, in, in hypotheticals. So I don't know. It, I, I, it, a lot of smart people sound like they're convinced a trade's going to happen. I'm still dubious. Um, so it's hard for me to judge the situation without knowing the end result. It, it feels like it, we were, he's 26 years old and he was yeah. very productive for, for the San Francisco 49ers. Is this, uh, oh, let's, let's start from the beginning. Let, let's, let's start here. Cause this obviously is centering on money. My belief is, and we, we've like broken this down 50 different ways, that there is a monumental difference between 26 million and 30 million in this conversation. And it's, it's a bit unclear, though there are reports out that the 49ers offered him $26 million in May, and not much has changed since that. Now we're hearing numbers from Mike Reese that, what was it, the Patriots offer was like $32 million. Mm. That is a massive discrepancy in the world of the NFL. What do you think Brandon Ayuk is worth as a wide receiver? Like, if we're are we are we talking top three money, top five money, top ten money? Like, what are we looking at? I think he's worth top ten money. Like, I think he's worth twenty eight to thirty. And if I'm the 49ers and your window appears to be closing like it is, I'm not I'm not really sweating a couple million dollars here and there. Like, I'm I'm just trying to get this deal done, trying to make sure you go into the season with the vibes. Uh, as high as they could possibly be and right now they're just not there's just a lot of question marks i was at camp on sunday and it was it was just this cloud sort of weighing over the entire practice right it's like mm -hmm. it's not really about what's going on on the field it's about the guys that aren't there in brandon Ayuk and trent williams and like it's really hard to get to the mountaintop and keep coming up short the way the 49ers have and at some point like the the championship window is going to close and at some point they're, you know, some guys are are gonna age out of this roster and they're not gonna be able to pay everybody. But Brandon Ayuk is a guy that you sort of bridge the gap to the next core, right? It's like it's Brock Purdy, it's gonna be Nick Bosa. Brandon Ayuk sh certainly should be that guy. Like you paid Christian McCaffrey, but you're gonna lose players elsewhere. So you got to keep the guys who are good and young and still in their prime. 
um, uh, even aside from just the conversation about this season where there's so much urgency to try to win a Super Bowl now. So if the 49ers end up trading Brandon Ayuk, to me, it's just a massive miscalculation uh, on their part throughout the entire offseason. Like you can make the case of, you know, trading Brandon Ayuk in April and getting a first round pick and then using that first round pick and you get a cost controlled player for four or five more years. Um, in the way that, you know, the Chiefs dealt Tyree Kill and still won Super Bowls, right? Um, in the way that the Packers traded Devontae Adams and while their receiving core hasn't been quite at that level, it's still, it's pretty good, right? It, like it hasn't been a complete disaster of a trade for them. There's plenty of logic and, and history behind trading a guy and recouping, you know, multiple draft picks if you can do it. But to do it in August, like during training camp, especially when you don't have to, to me that just, I don't, I don't understand the logic of it. And, and this whole thing screams like malpractice if the 49ers do end up making this deal and Brandon Ayuk is playing elsewhere in 2024. Yeah. I, I, uh, I don't understand trading. Well, I understand trading. I don't understand trading if you're not getting um, a starter at one of these positions and need back. Like if you're just doing it for picks then you can, you can do that whenever. Like me and Jesse were talking about earlier, maybe the picks aren't as good, but I'm not worried about that, right? Like I'm worried about if I'm making a trade, I need a verified starter. So I, I'm I'm of the belief like the trade is is going to happen. I'd like to see what they get back in return. Um, and if it's anything less than a certified starter, um, that's that's one that I can't give them a pass on. That that'd be that'd be all bad in my opinion. And if you look at, you know, a lot of people are talking about the Steelers. Who on the Steelers would you be happy with getting back? Uh, we, right? we, yeah, it's it's not there, man. It's at it's least not, not there. a wide receiver position. I mean, I like George Pickens. If you're I, would, getting... I would take George Pickens back, but I don't think he's on the table. I, I don't know that Pickens is even a Kyle Shanahan type receiver. Like for me, it's like, could you get Mika Fitzpatrick? But if you're the Steelers, yeah, I can't I imagine thinking, the Steelers. Do you, yeah, do you go to another position? outside of that yeah, wide like I, position and see what you can get. And I but I can't imagine the Steelers wanting to give up Minka. So like right. at, you know, one of their young offensive linemen, like is that moving the needle? Like Kyle Shanahan and Chris Forrester talk all the time about, you know, the important players are the ones with the balls in their hands and you hope you can get, you know, you hope you can get linemen in the middle rounds of the draft. Like trading Brandon Ayuk for an offensive lineman just doesn't seem like that's something they would do at all. So I don't know, man. I it seems like a trade is is likely, but I just I feel like they could say, all right, you saw what the market is. These teams offered you this much. Maybe now we'll we'll raise our offer to this level. But I mean, I, I don't going from 26 to 28, like shouldn't be that much of a hassle. Like I know they have they, they have constraints, but that to me, like, you know, this is the wrong time and the wrong team to be pinching pennies like this. Do you think um like, why do the 49ers do this? Like, why, why is this happening again? Like, wh why, why, why do they insist on it going this way? So I, I feel I'm, 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 I kind of straddle the fence on this because they've done a really good job, obviously, of putting together a good roster and having a lot of really high paid, highly paid players. Um, and they've done so like George Kittle, top of the market when they signed him. Same with Fred Warner, same with Trent Williams, same with Christian McCaffrey. So they've been willing to go to the top of the market for all these positions. And it's just odd to me now that they're deciding against doing it for Brandon Ayuk, even though he clearly deserves it. Mm -hmm. um, I do wonder if there's an element of like, well, we have Debo Samuel and, you know, we, we sort of thought that maybe we would be moving on from Debo Samuel because of the health concerns long term and his style of play and is he, you know, is he going to age all that well, given all the physical contact that he takes? But then Debo Samuel happens to be like the best player at training camp right now. Right. And so like is, you know, can, can you make a decision about, all right, well, we'll pay Brandon Ayuk, but we'll move on from Debo. Can you think that way right now if you're the Niners? I don't know. So I, this keeps happening because they're very judicious on their contracts. I think Prague Marate is very good at manipulating the salary cap. And, and there's a reason why they've been contending for as long as they have. It's because they have a lot of good players and they have to pay a lot of these players and they've done a good job of that. But at some point it's going to go the other way and you're not going to be able to pay everybody. And it, it just feels to me right now, they're being way too tight about this. And uh, just particularly what's at stake. Like, you know, it, it's just, it's it's not a time to be trading, you know, a, a young ascending all pro type player 
uh, when you're trying to win a Super Bowl this year because you don't know if you're ever going to be back here again because of the financial ramifications coming up over the next few years and all the guys you're going to have to lose. The um, uh, the thought of paying Brandon Ayuk thirty million dollars. I like Brandon Ayuk. If I could, I I would. If I was a general manager, you think the Forty Nine ers should be paying a wide receiver thirty million dollars a year? It's a team that passes the least in the game and uses their tight ends and all this other stuff. Do you think they should be paying a wide receiver thirty million dollars a year? He he was an all pro and he blocks his ass off, right? Like he's, he's not one dimensional in the sense of like, he's not an asset on the field during the, in, in the running game. Right. So he fits Kyle Shanahan to a T he fits Brock Purdy to a T and we haven't talked about Brock Purdy at all, but like, man, if you're about to give Brock Purdy 55, $60 million, you better have, you better maximize him in terms of, you know, the weapons around him that he's comfortable with. And maybe Ricky Pearsall develops into that, but I think it's pretty clear that Brandon Ayuk is the best long-term fit with Brock Purdy. And now if you trade him and then you're paying Brock Purdy $60 million a year next off season, and he doesn't have his best weapon, I just think you're, you're, you know, it's a slippery slope. Like you're not setting yourself up to succeed in that sense. And man, I would just pay everyone you can now and then deal with the financial stuff later. They're trying to, they're trying to do this. Like, I think they're trying to fit the future into the present a little bit too much or factor the future into the present a little bit too much. And I think, you know, if they end up, tra- if they end up trading him, it's going to bite him. Like that's, that's, that's my opinion. Um, and you know, maybe it works out, but I, you know, I have a hard time finding, finding the logic in trading Brandon Ayuk in August. If you, if you were to tell me they traded Brandon Ayuk for a first round pick before the draft and they drafted someone that they really liked and that player is going to help them, then I could, you know, you could talk me into that. You can't talk me into trading Brandon Ayuk in August. Do you think that really is the 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 biggest hang up right now? The idea of not necessarily what our cap looks like right now, but everyone knows and everyone in football has written about the Brock Purdy contract coming next year. And the fact that this team is loaded with really good players at multiple positions on both sides of the ball. Is that what they're trying to navigate right now today when dealing with Brandon Ayuk is all of this stuff that's going to happen in the future? Yeah, covering the team for as long as I did, talk like whenever you would talk to John Lynch, he would always talk about, you know, they have a three year plan at all times, right? So a- everything they would do would factor in that three year plan. And they would, you know, be looking ahead and trying to balance competing now and not, um, not putting them in a bad spot three years down the road. But at a certain point, it's like the 1994 team, and there was no salary cap in 1994. So it's not analogous in that way. But like they went all in on that season because they were able to get Deion Sanders and they were able to piece together, you know, the best roster in the NFC because they had been on the doorstep for so long and, and hadn't broken through since, the, or since, you know, whenever it was 1990 to 1991. And then that's that's sort of where they are now. And now there's a salary cap, but they still have that 1994 type roster, but they're not going all in. Right. And so I think that that is the source of frustration. If you're a 49ers fan, it's like, and you, you're a team that sets the standard of, you know, Super Bowl or bust every year, basically. And now you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're risk losing one of your best offensive players for a couple million dollars a year. Like if that's, you know, if the reported numbers are accurate, which I think, I think they are like that, that to me is just, it's not the direction that they should be going. Yeah. I, th- I think there's a difference in my opinion in if, if it, if you could get them for 28, 28 and a half and you're stuck on this 26 number, I mean that's just that's egregious if you're the 49ers. That that is that 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 can't happen. Um if it's 32 plus, which you know there's a report out there that he turned down 32 from the Patriots, maybe he feels he could get that or something around there for the Steelers. That's a little different. I'll ask you Chris a question that I asked Jesse and and, and D'Lo. Is is Brandon Ayuk a top 5 player on the 49ers? Oh man. Um Okay, so Trent Williams, Nick Bosa, Christian McCaffrey, that's three. Uh, George Kittle, Fred Warner. Mm. Man. Yeah, you didn't even name the quarterback yet. You didn't name the quarterback. And Brock Purdy, yeah. That goes into – Yeah. I I think you got to think about that too. You're going to pay a guy that's not top five on your team $30 million. I I would pay him because I just like Brandon Ayuk and I like offense, right? But 
when every time I ask somebody, everybody's like, "Yo, you got to pay him. You got to pay him." I was like, "He's not even top five on your own team." But that's you. That's 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 unique to this team. Like, so let's let's do this the other way. Okay, he's seventh. We could throw Kittle. I, I don't agree with Kittle, but like that's fine. Let's put mm-hmm. throw them all in there. He's seventh. Can you afford to lose him? Mm-hmm. I I don't. Well, I, here's the thing. I What's think, I, I don't know how they look at it. Well, you got all the money. In the you, world. This was a decision. This was a decision they needed to make in the spring before the draft. Like I, Kenny, I get where you're coming from. Like if you're like, yeah, we're not going to pay our seventh best player thirty million dollars a year. I get that, but you can't make that decision in August. Like you got to make like move on. Like do the DeForest Buckner thing and try to get and try mm. to recoup a first round pick. And I, then not that the DeForest Buckner thing worked out, but there are plenty not. of examples of. <laughs> there, there are plenty of examples elsewhere of trading a good player for a first round pick and, and recouping. And we saw the Chiefs do it um, with Tyree Kills. So, like, I just think, regardless of what where you're at on paying Brandon Ayuk, that's not a decision for August. It's a decision for before the draft. So, at least you can move forward and help your team this year. Because, you know, like we, like we said, unless it's, unless they're getting Mika Fitzpatrick, there's nobody on the Steelers roster that you're adding for, and while you lose Brandon Ayuk, that gives you that, gives you the same chance or a better chance to to win a Super Bowl this year. Yeah. I think uh sorry Dan. Um I think the Niners just misread this this situation, the whole situation. There's an argument to not doing that at the draft cuz you say, "Nah, we want him we're here first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Like we want him on the team. Like we're not disgruntled with him. We don't want to move on from him. We want him on the team. Let's not be so rash right now. And let's let's wait till, you know, later in the summer and we'll figure this thing out." And they just haven't like, and I don't, I don't, I guess somebody's got to get blamed on anything, but I don't think the the thinking in that case is that far off, especially if you want the guy on your team, if you want him on your team, you're not just getting rid of him at the draft. Cause he says, I, I want out. Like you're going to try and see this thing through and, and maybe it's a gamble. And it seems like right now they gambled wrong. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I think one thing they miscalculated was the receiver market overall, right? Because it sounded like they were ready to give Brandon Ayuk $26 million before Justin Jefferson signed, before A.J. Brown signed, before Jalen Waddle signed, right? Like they knew all these receivers were free or were going to get new contracts. And it always happens in the NFL, right? Everyone just gets more expensive. When Jimmy Garoppolo signed in February 2018, he was he was the highest paid player in the league for like a week until the next quarterback got his contract. Like that's always how it works in the league with the growing salary cap. Like these guys, the, the numbers are always going to get bigger. And I think they thought or for some reason they didn't foresee the fact that so many receivers were going to get paid and these numbers were going were gonna to get driven up. And it would have been it would have made way more sense to make the aggressive push to sign Brandon Ayuk if he was really important to you, sign him in the spring before all these other guys signed. That way you're you're not getting inflated by, you know, the A.J. Brown deal, the Devontae Smith deal, all that stuff. Like all that stuff happened. And Brandon Ayuk's like, well, I might have been worth 26 in March, but look at all these dudes who signed like I'm worth 28, 29, 30 now. And that 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 I think is the Niners biggest miscalculation was that they should have looked at the market and known that these numbers were going to go up um in a way that would have made them uncomfortable yeah i wonder if offering him 28 in march would have been or or, or whatever it may whenever the deal was allegedly offered if it, it the 28 offer because what, what, what we hear is 26 but if you offered him 28 before the waddle deal hits and before some of these deals that chris just referenced right there mm-hmm. does it feel different than today yeah you probably get the deal done i, I would think that's a yeah it, and you remember you you remember when George Kittle like the when the 49ers first approached George Kittle's camp um I forget who reported it it was the, they gave him an offer on Valentine's Day and Kittle's camp called it the Valentine's Day massacre because it was such a bad offer like the 49ers love starting low and then working to you know whatever they're going to get but for whatever reason they started low and just haven't been able to haven't worked up to the rest of the market and it's you know it's it's I don't know that there's a good reason for it. I really don't. It's it's odd to me that they're doing this. Do you think 26 is low? Yeah. Okay. But that, yeah, that, I mean, we've had that discussion. Like I, I it, it I feels think, like 26 is too low for the caliber of player that Brandon Ayuk is. I think Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Brandon Ayuk are very comparable players, just in terms of their value, right? I don't think Amon Ross, St. Brown is worth 30. 
but you know, like I would say Amon Ross St. Brown's were 28. Mm -hmm. If I was like really picking nits, right? But that the like the Niners are one of the most valuable franchises in sports. Like just just guarantee a little bit more money here. Like it's it's not that difficult. I just, I don't know. I don't know That's what Jed's doing. I believe it's 28. Like if if they're at twenty six reported, well now it might be thirty two. Well, and that's a different conversation, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right? a very different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if it's twenty eight, I'm looking at the forty nine ers. Funny, I'm like, what? You're not gonna give him two more mil annually, or a mil and a half, or whatever the case may be. You sound crazy. If yeah. it's 32. if it was thirty two, he should he should have taken it then. Well, right? thirty two. Like if he. Yeah, if it was if it was about the money, and well, it was unless you think you can get thirty two from Pittsburgh, well, that's a dangerous. You you can't think. You have to know. It's it. You have I, to I know. Was, like you have to know what Pittsburgh's offer is. I, I I agree, and it feels like it feels like I'll give this to Brandon Ayuk. Him and his representative, they've known a lot this whole time. They knew not to sign that deal early. They they knew not to cave. They knew, hey, we can get. I think that agent is telling we can, we don't have to settle for no twenty six, not even twenty eight. We can get X amount of dollars if you want it. All you got to do is, is stick to your guns. And so far, so far they're well, right. But yeah, because like we didn't yeah. even know if they can get thirty two. He got he got thirty two uh, allegedly and offer a thirty two million. They got it. Yeah, the they Patriots. got it from the Detroit Pistons though. Yeah. You want to go play for the Detroit? You, Monty, you want to go coach the Detroit Pistons? And I guess Monty went and did it. So, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I guess it's possible. But I, the the one thing they don't know is the end game because this is like you could say, hey, we got a contract in place. Pittsburgh, let's say Pittsburgh's 32. Great. You're eight. You guys played this beautifully. Fantastic. Chris pointed this out a minute ago. I'm sorry. What are you sending back? Because mm -hmm. – we're trying to, and this is this is the key component to everything. We're trying to win a Super Bowl. Your second round pick next year or two years from now, that doesn't help us win a Super Bowl right now. How am I going to look Trent Williams in the face when I got to go get his contract situation dealt with? How am I going to look Fred Warner in the face and tell them, yeah, sorry, man, but, you know, you're getting a good draft pick next year. You can't. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. Which is why I still think there might be a better chance than what's out there publicly that they just keep them. I'm with you. Yep. Well, I'm with you. Take it, take it for what it's worth. I know Rappaport is saying what he's saying, but Schefter's weighed in. And there's right. there's video of it. I obviously haven't heard it, but the caption is Adam Schefter reports that the situation with Brandon Ayuk is still at a standstill and the 49ers are not in a rush to make a move. Okay. So there it is. And that's uh, the way they should be. Like like well I, yeah. well, I wouldn't be in a rush to make a move. Well, I well I, it, it depends on Chris's answer to to my next question before we let him go. Is the Trent Williams thing a big deal or do you think they have or is this this is they're going to get this dealt with with no problem? I think the Trent thing is going to get dealt with because it's probably similar to McCaffrey. It's it's probably just guaranteeing money that he's probably going to make anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, and finding a way to inflate his average annual value so it's number one in the league, so he can be on top of the spo track and over the cap lists. Well, they need to do so, it because it makes me nervous. <laughs> if you're Trent Williams and you're if you're Trent Williams and you're as accomplished as he is, you probably aren't dying to get to training camp before you know the second preseason game. Well, you, you you say it's because I'm a fan, but they're they're making me nervous because how they misread this situation. I don't want them misread yeah, another. I, one. I don't think they're going to misread one. With they Trent better Williams. not, because I, I honestly think Trent Williams will sit down and say, "Look, we ain't doing what you just did. <laughs> Let's get this dealt with right now. Here's what I want. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's how you. Here's what you need to do." And John Lynch goes, "Okay," and they end it. That's how it goes. With, at least with and Brandon Ayuk, Brandon they have a great sweater. <laughs> <laughs> at least with, with brandon Ayuk, they have ricky pearson and juan jennings jalen moore is not is not those guys from a talent <laughs> perspective <it>. so. uh <laughs> great catching up chris man we appreciate you so much excited for uh a football season to get here and and king's basketball to get here you know a month and some change away and we 
uh, we could talk a lot more, uh, not about contracts and what ifs, but what's happening on the field <laughs> in the court. Absolutely. Good to, good to see you guys as always. Appreciate you. I right, appreciate you. That's our man, Chris Biederman right there. The Sacramento B 